Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. Life can be miserable, life can be dark, but we're here to bring you a little bit of light and a little bit of joy. Got that the wrong way round this time. Little bit of joy, little bit of light. But hey, we've got an editing genius. That's Stu. Hi Bradley, how you doing Stu? I'm not sure I qualify as genius in any regard. Slacking, maybe. Uh, I'm still pretty good at slacking. You know, it's that Gen X upbringing. It always, you know, allows for a lot of slack. It's pretty good. Yeah, fair enough. Right, just a head, just a heads up for everyone. Right, we're having a nice, relaxing one this week. Uh, Stu's got stresses with moves and work. Um, I've just got stresses through being me. Um, so no social issues, no no mental health stuff this week. It's just games. Um, can't promise that might stay like that. We, one of us will say something that will trigger someone else, um, and then we'll go into it at some point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, which makes it very hard to segue, Stu. Um, do you know what has triggers, Stu? What's that? Gun cons. Yeah. And do you know what you can play gun cons with? Play with gun cons. Gun cons with? What? Gun cons on? Yeah, what can yeah. you play with? Video games, Stu. Yay! Video there games. There we are. It was there somewhere. There we go. Yeah, it was. I had no intro. And we still segue. How good that? That's pretty good. Use the word trigger. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a um, there is a video on our on your well our mental health game in YouTube of me mm. actually tweaking a gun con doing a mod on it. And there we go. We'll link that in the uh, show description. There yes. you go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, cross promotion. Look at us go. Like so and good. subscribe. Like and subscribe. That's that's it. Smash that bell. <laughs> um, yeah. Smash that like button. Yeah, that's the one. Um, right. You've got two, I've got three. So, Stu, ask the question. So, Brad, what have you been playing? I have been playing Kingdom 80s. Look, I'm straight into it. You asked me to be quick this week, so I'm pretty well. I know I'm spending days to describe it. Anyway, yeah, I've been playing Kingdom <laughs> 80s, Stu. Um, have you ever played the Kingdom series, by the way? No. No, right. So, the Kingdom series, it's like a tower building, a tower defence um, strategy building type game. It's on a 2D plane. You basically have to expand outwards to sort of like defend your fault, etc., etc. And it's usually set in like these medieval realms. Well, they've made a short story version of it um, called Kingdom 80s, which is set in the, the 1980s. Um, fact fans, not in the 1880s or 1780s or 1680s or anything like that. The 1980s. Um, and it's pretty much the same game, but it's got more of a story base to it. Um, and basically, it's a love letter to the 80s. So, it's got... Okay, put it this way. If they'd called this Stranger Things Tower Defence, then it wouldn't be far from the mark. Um, you've got, you know, a bunch of kids, like four kids, mainly and a dog... Um, and they go around on bikes to travel around and stuff like that. And then you've got to build your, like, you have this, like, this camp. And this is how it starts. Um, and you have to sort of build your defences to protect against the greed, they're called. There's like these mysterious monsters called the greed that are coming in to try and attack your camp. And you've got to protect against them. Um, so you build up defences. Uh, you have to do other things to sort of like get other, like to earn coins to build things up. So typical tower defensey type stuff on a 2D plane. Um, and it's a really interesting game. It works like really, really, really well as a, as a series. I've quite enjoyed the entire Kingdom series. Uh, but what I like about this one is it's much shorter. Um, it's cheaper as well, which is good, but it's much, much shorter. Um, and the 80s references are really, really cool. And I've, I think I've said this before with stuff. So Skyrim or the the Elder Scrolls games and Fallout are essentially the same game. Um, apologies to anyone who's really into them, but they're essentially the same game. But I've always gravitated towards Fallout because I understand that setting more. Um, and it's the same with like any kind of game like that. You tell me... like. Arcade magic and wizards and stuff like I can't associate myself with it. Put it in a modern setting or a setting that I understand, like a technological setting or an apocalyptic setting, I get it and I can associate more with that. And it's the same with this. And it's got like references to, like I would say it's got references to Stranger Things in there, Mad Max, um, E.T., Back to the Future. 
um, Rocky, Team Wolf, all those loads of different references in there. Um, obviously, some eighties horrors because it's set in like a like a, a camp, which I think could vaguely be based off Camp Crystal Lake. Um, and yeah, I just really, really enjoying the whole the whole concept of it. And for anyone who likes tower defense games. Um, it's definitely worth trying out. Great fun, and as I say the eighties aesthetic is brilliant. Lovely, yeah, no, no, that actually sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, it is. It's really simple. Um, it's like tutorialized to start with, and like like little stories. So you have to you have to go and help a friend before you could do something else. So you have to build your base out to protect them, so they can come down from like a tower to come and help you. Um, and then yeah. you can then upgrade because you've now save that thread to upgrade something else to go and do something else so it teaches you about the importance of why you need to upgrade defenses and not just build defenses for example it's a, a loads of little bits like that and i would say it would work as a my first tower defense or my first strategy game really really well because it doesn't assume you know everything but it also doesn't assume that you're a stupid little two-year-old um, so it respects you in so many ways. Um, and it's just a great fun game with a great aesthetic. So, yeah. Um, check it out, Kingdom 80s. I actually kind of want to. Especially, as you said, it's my first. I always like that prefix because, yeah. you know, <laughs> just like no one's going to expect me to be good, which is, a, which is definitely a good thing. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it does sound intriguing and it looks pretty. So And it's quite compare it's like it's quite good value as well like 8.99 currently yes yeah. steam so yeah it's a possibility oh yeah that is definitely i mean i i would argue like what is your history with tower defense games how you know uh you've got some of the like the ones that have been around for years whose names i can't remember but they was popular on like the phones and that for a while um oh i don't know what's the uh monsters one like uh Made a Plants whole... versus Zombies. No, no, you made they made a whole series like with with the name and stuff like that. But anyway, you like oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> You're uh, asking the wrong person. Whatever, no but idea. yeah, there, there, there's like if you've ever played a tower defense game, then you'll you'll have enough of a knowledge of it. Um, so you'll go, oh yeah, I get the idea. You know, you've got to earn coins by doing other bits to build other bits. That concept. What well, if you know that concept, then you're fine. Um, that that's about the only thing I would argue. But it even guides you through that, going, "Hey, look, here's some coins. Use these coins to do this." Um, so, but it's got a good art style. It's really well written too. So that that I'm, I'm, I was really pleased. I went into it a bit. Oh, I've played a lot of kingdoms. Is this is going to be a new skin? And yes, it is. But it's a great skin as well, and it's a good it's a good jumping on point for anyone to try these games. Nice, yeah, cool. What have you been playing, Joe? Have you have well, you jumped out the eighties? <laughs> I have, I have, um, and I then dived back in. But my first game was jumping out of the eighties pool, as it were. But um, yeah, I, I kind of playing something almost completely the opposite. It's got tenuous links to the eighties, as you'll see. But I've been playing a game called Mars First Logistics. Which doesn't really say on the tin what it is, but it's very intriguing. So basically what it is, is you are a lunar lander, although it's not lunar. So a Mars Marser lander. Um, you're a Mars rover type vehicle. And you've got the tasks to help colonists to uh, basically build up Mars, the planet Mars. And you start with like tiny little objects that you have to shift around and, and help them build a infrastructure a society uh, you know a habitable habitable you know place to be and how does that work well it's back to a little bit of you know zelda tears of the kingdom bit of uh, nuts and bolts in that you have to customize your vehicle so that it can do tasks so if you want to pick up a bucket you best have some sort of a hook so that you can hook it onto your vehicle. If you want to carry something heavy, you better have a broad base so you can put stuff on your back. And how does it do that? Uh, Lego, basically. Meccano. Uh, off-brand Lego. It's not real. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> off-brand Lego, really. <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah, basically Lego style. You know, 
bricks clipping together and all of that. And um, yeah, intriguing. Intriguing is the word. So it looks very much in that sort of French aesthetic, like Merbius and the Tintin stuff, you know, Hergé. Yeah. Uh, you know, cell shaded, really gorgeous. Looks like Sable and Roller Drome, those games. Really attractive looking game. Runs perfectly on the deck. And very intriguing the way that you, when you go into the, like the menu to add stuff to your little your little Tonka truck thing, your little Lego truck, it's uh, very much like the instruction manuals that you get for these things for when you buy Lego. Yeah. And uh, you have a certain number of pieces you can use, which, of course, increases when you complete tasks. So, yeah, really intriguing stuff. Um, I think it, uh, if it finds the right market, I think it'll do really, really well. I am not the right market, but mm. I, I totally see its value. I think it looks really, really good fun. And if you're into that, if you're into construction, building, logistics, planning, all that stuff, I think you're gonna really like it. Yeah, it's I, I've got this as well, um, and it's it's charming as hell. Um, I, I'm not very good at thinking outside the box at creating my own stuff, but I've, I've had a go with it, and luckily you get blueprints for most of it, which 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 is good. But yeah, I I, I really 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 like it it's you know i was a big fan of lego meccano and, and, and that kind of stuff when i was younger um i still am a fan of it but i just can't have it around i lose bits and i, I like if it's out of sight i lose interest but it allows me to do that stuff <clears throat> that i always liked doing or want to do without the mess um and yeah my my thoughts on it are okay, this is a really, really fun and interesting first go at things. I want to see them do more. I want to see this become a series or, or you know, just if they was to drop the bars and just call it first logistics or something like that and build out further with it. So I don't know, construction sites like on a building site or whatever, not, not on Mars or... Or can you do like search and rescue type things and all, all different stuff like that? Whatever, just build this out because there's so much potential, and the way it works so far, I'm I'm really enamoured by it. It seems yeah, it seems to have a really good underlying physics engine as well, which is so important. Yes, um, for it to feel feel right, it seems to have Earth gravity, <laughs> which is a bit funky considering it is Mars, but um, that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I think, it, like you say, it could be expanded out to something really big. Uh, I'm interested to see how many of these things we're going to get because it's like that, you know, ants and a bug's life kind of thing from decades ago where sometimes things just come out at the same time coincidentally, but sometimes there's a plan. And it, it doesn't, with that, with this and like Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, it does seem like that kind of, oh, you can build your own things in our environment, like, and then use them as objects in the game that seems to be like the big push mm. but I, that just could be like recency bias for me i don't know but it's interesting anyway this has the better art style just to say oh yeah it's gorgeous uh, i love it i love that art style yeah it shows the importance of getting your art style right because this has longevity to it if they had gone for something realistic or sort of like really focused on oh let's try and make the world realistic or whatever like that it would age quickly. You see it every yeah. single time. Something that looks visually impressive now in terms of, oh my God, look how real that looks or anything like that, ages poorly. Um, anything that's got this yeah. art, like got an art direction to it, always ages well. Jet Set Radio still looks good 20 odd years later. Um, yeah. And there's a reason for that. Um, yeah, Tony Hawk as good as that original game was, looks a bit shit now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, there's a reason why uh, Wind Waker is still one of the best-looking Zelda games and all the 2D ones are great-looking Zelda games. Mm -hmm. And um, that one they put out on the Wii, which I forgot what it was called, GameCube and Wii one. Uh, I can't remember, but that looks a bit shit Zelda now. game or different? Zelda different game. game. I can't remember what oh, it was. Oh, um, Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess, yeah. Looks a bit naff visually now. In my yeah. opinion. So, yeah, art style all the way. Uh, this has it. And as you said, it's 
it's, it's not going to be for everyone, but it's intriguing. It's one to dip in and out of, I think, uh, when you're feeling a little bit creative. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, funnily enough, I was watching a, a speed run last night of Halo 4, <clears throat> which I'm a big defender of and most people hate, which is fine. And that came out in 2012, and it was a, it was like the last 360 game, I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the last big ones. And it looks phenomenal. And it's yeah. because it, it runs completely flawlessly. You never get any frame hitches. You never get any clipping textures. You never get any breakages. It just looks like a complete world and completely solid. And they've made some art choices in it that are like the, the level of bloom is right. There's some brilliant particle effects. And none of them are like crazy, but they're just consistent and they're attractive. And if you do that right, you've, you've got a long-term sort of visual classic on your hands even if it's not like a you know a gameplay classic it's you know yeah the aesthetics yep. there i agree mm. with you halo 3 still holds up because again they they, yeah. they found an art style and stuck to it and, and went with it and yeah you know it has aged but not as much as other shooters of that generation as well so yeah totally yeah. with you on that yep talking of aging series and that 360 era I've been playing Trepan 2 or Trepan Squared. I don't know how you pronounce this one. It's Trepan or Trepan. Um, it's got a two at the end, but I don't know if it's a two or a squared. But anyway, uh, my review yeah. of this is, do you remember Fear? I do. Right. There you go. It's Fear. Yes. Have at it. Um, yeah, basically. I will. <laughs> basically, the sequel to Fear and Fear 2, we won't say anything about Fear 3, um, that uh, we've been waiting for. Um, and that's basically what this game is. Um, yeah, it's a gory FPS with uh, otherworldly um, enemies and story scenarios and, and things like that. Uh, with bullet dodging um, in there. It's it's fast, it's frantic, it's tense. Um, it's not scary because games can't be scary because nothing's scary, but that's just me. Um, so some people might find it scary. Um, it's got a really, really good single player campaign. Yay. Do you remember those? Good single player campaigns? Vaguely. Too? Vaguely, yeah. Um, yeah, no multiplayer. Do you remember when games went, do you know what? We've got a good single player game. That'll do. Do you remember that? <laughs> Vaguely. Yeah, well, this this does that. Um, there's no multiplayer. It's just a good, solid single-player game where you're just constantly on the go all the time, shooting the crap out of anything you see. It's atmospheric as hell. Um, the visuals are, are really cool. Uh, maybe a bit realistic in places and it might not age well graphically, blah, blah, blah. We just spoke about all that. Uh, but for playing it right now, the mix of... Um, shooting mechanics, melee mechanics, the superpowers you pick up and stuff like that, the close corridor, like the tight corridors with the with the darkness and the, like using your torch and everything, all comes together really, really well. Not the best torch I've ever seen in a game, but a good torch um, in terms of how it lights the room. Um, do you know you sometimes get those torches where it like it's a dot and that torch just lights <laughs> up a dot. And then you get yeah. others that just light up a whole room. You go, there is an in-between. This does the in-between bit really well. So, well done to these. Uh, but uh, this, the environment's sort of destructive in places. Um, enemy AI is pretty decent, uh, depending on the on the difficulty level you choose. Um, you can be flanked and stuff like that. Um, some are just bullet fodder. Uh, but, oh my God, it's, it's everything I wanted in a fear spiritual successor shall we say um and yeah and i i absolutely fucking adore this game it's brilliant nice um, and also yeah. 25 quid as well so it's it's realized that it's not going to sell itself on just being single player alone it's got look it's only single player 25 quid there you go have fun well i certainly will because it's been a long time since i've played a new FPS and the most recent one I think I played was Proteus, which is a boomer shooter, yep. so it's a throwback. Good enough, but you know, it's a throwback. The last one that's actually new and had new ideas that I played was Bright Memory Infinite. Do you remember that one? I have no idea what words you've just said. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of an odd one. So there's a game called Bright Memory, I think it's Korean, 
and it's uh, it you it's a mixture. You remember, is it Red Steel that was on the Wii, mm-hmm. um, which was it was mainly oh, there's another one that's more appropriate. I can't remember the name. Um, where you, you've got gunplay and you've got melee combat, specifically with a sword, and um, it, it's kind of like that, but it's yeah. it's just a regular pad or mouse and keyboard game. Um, and they brought out a enhanced version called Bright Memory Infinite about a year and a half ago, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really good. If you're into FPS and you want to play a modern one that's that looks good, plays well, got new ideas, that's one. Um, but yeah, no, I'd seen Trepang 2 or Trepang Squared or whatever it's called. Um, and yes, it looks fantastic. And it's such a long time since the, you know, like mainstream new FPSs. They're just hard. They're hardly around at all now no. you know because because all of those like hero shooters have taken over and you know call duties dominating still and it's just like yeah no i don't want them i, I want stuff like this yeah no <clears throat> totally and it's it's one of those and it's why i like the single player campaign of titanfall 2 uh because it didn't matter if you was good or not because no one's there to ruin your experience. It's just like, oh, I'll just get better at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, which is fine. Whereas other FPSs nowadays, you're like, well, I'm not going to be very good at the like the main part of the game, so I don't know if I'll bother. Um, but yeah, this is yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, and so, just very very quickly before I go into your your next game. Um, on the whole, if you noticed, listeners that we don't particularly go, oh, this runs well on the Steam Deck anymore, because it's pretty much a given that most of the stuff we're playing generally runs well on the Steam Deck, and this is another one. Uh, Mars, Fingy, uh, First Logistics, plays really well. Uh, Kingdom 80s plays really well. So you're more likely to get us to mention the Steam Deck now if it doesn't run well on the Steam Deck. And yeah, this one runs flawlessly on the Steam Deck. Headphones in, at night, handheld in your hand. God damn, it's good. Nice. Yeah, I think that with, with with PC releases now, I think you're better off as a developer aiming to be behind the technological curve rather than ahead. Um, and like my basis for that is like one of them is Bright Memory Infinite, which had some RTX options that really killed the performance and um, was better if you just put the settings down a bit, which it allowed for, and it still looked pretty. And yeah, it, it, if you if you have that breadth of you know you can play it across pretty much anything like although maybe not the switch because it's basically an old phone it's by this toy, point it's in time toy. it is no consoles <laughs> for kids <laughs> <laughs> no i love it i can't wait for super mario wonder i really can't but that's a whole world show but um yeah no i'm really looking forward to playing trapang 2 I, I it has been on my radar uh it, dr- it dropped off but it's way back up on it now so yeah, yeah doing it do it, do it. Tell, I, I want to hear your thoughts because it is, yeah, it's it's brilliant. I'm not very good at it, but it's brilliant. Nice. What's next from you, Stu? Because I hear, I hear that you've been going a bit 80s past yeah. horror as well. I have. I've I've plunged back into the, the pool that is the 80s. And I've been playing Aliens Dark Descent, uh, which is a sort of... RPS, um, that's probably the wrong term. RTS, I mean. Yes. So it's kind of an RTS, uh, but it's when they say real time strategy, they kind of don't mean that anyway. They they mean you know there's there's little bits of pauses and stuff. This is very much a kind of like an action game which has RTS elements in a way. So. It's also semi-automated. So to give you an idea, it's kind of the setup and the look and and the angle is is very XCOM. Yeah. And the kind of things that you do, like you know, select your squad and kick them out, and the way that you point them in the environment, very XCOM. But the difference is, it's very much real time when you get into it. So you kind of you get a little bit of a pause like a little bit of a slowdown effect unless you change that in accessibility which I'll come to when you select uh, a marine so that you can uh, give them actions but generally it's kind of like the idea is that you, you you get overwhelmed because it's it's the aliens franchise and that's the whole point of it uh, there's a stealth mechanic involved in it as well so it tracks stealth well and you basically do you, yeah 
where well, to what I've played so far, it's basically aping the film. It's like different characters. It's different, you know, envi- slightly different environments, but it all looks exactly as you'd expect, like Hadley's Hope and LV-426. And, you know, you've all got the same type of weapons. The Marines say the same types of things and behave in the same types of ways. But the story's good. Uh, the plot is good. I won't spoil it here because it's... I. You know me, I almost never watch FMV or cutscenes. I just like, I have no patience for them. I watched the opening cutscene all the way through. I was gripped. Um, really good, really good. Great story, great atmosphere. And in terms of gameplay, yeah, you really get that sense of tension. So you have your, your tracker telling you when there are things in the environment. And of course, that could be people or it could be aliens. And you have to do things like set your overwatch, which will. You know, so so your marines can walk along with their gun ready and ready to react fast, but it slows their pace down. So it's all about you know maintaining your environment, crapping yourself about what's to come around the corner, and then unexpected events happening and just throwing out all your plans whilst you get swarmed by face huggers or you know <laughs> drone creatures. And yeah, it's uh, is it a good game? It, oh yes, it really is. It's got a fair bit of junk. I won't go into it in too much detail, it's way too boring, but when I was playing it on my PC, yeah, I did have some issues with tearing and things, and it's very CPU bound, it's worth doing a few tricks in the background um, to make sure it runs as smoothly as it can. Uh, It shows that, yeah, it takes the piss because it was struggling on my PC, which is well powerful, and then I ran it perfectly on the Steam Deck because it was just configured better for steam deck out of the box so i was like oh i'll copy my deck settings back to my big big ass pc and uh, suddenly it was fine um so it runs well on the steam deck make sure that you tweak things appropriately but yeah good it's got really good controller support uh and it's as i said it's got accessibility options you can have it so that it when you're making a decision it completely pauses the action Ooh, it's got yes. lots of um gamma color color blind text size lots and lots and lots of accessibility options i have not played with all of them but i know they're all in there so that's a huge thumbs up to them uh so yeah it's so far i've not had the time on it I'd like really but so far it's been really good fun and it's it's as aliensy as you could aliensy possibly aliensy want sweet i could i could get this i just like a, a basically it's in my uh my cd keys wish list because you can get it for just over 25 quid on cd keys and i am been so tempted and hearing about the accessibility options yeah because one of my big problems with rts is i can't i just like ah, oh, i need time um they don't always give you yeah. time so one that allows you yeah. to turn that on and give you that time is yeah oh i'm tempted now i am very very tempted by that one yeah, it's one of those. It's like Terminator. Is it Resistance? That the FPS that came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a few years back. Yeah, it's like that in that it's kind of a an A or a double A type game. Probably let's say just A. And um, but I think it's going to be a grower rather than a shower. I think it's going to have a long tail and do really well over time. Yeah. Even though its impact has been a bit low, um, I think it's going to really grow a, a fan base because um, it's got a really solid core to it and a really good idea with a great ip back in it yeah no i, I the aliens franchise or well, the aliens the aliens ip yeah it's um I, it's always enamored me I, I think the films are great i hell i even enjoyed resurrection okay right i even enjoyed yeah. it for what it was because it's <laughs> aliens it's it's yeah. bad it's a bad film but it's aliens so you know give well, it to me y- yeah talking of crap defending crap films i quite like alien versus predator which yeah. is absolutely abysmal because why not why not it's yeah. stupid so why not yep. i like what you like okay simple as that so yeah i'm uh, alien free on the mega drive i think i played the one where you had to spend most of your time crawling through the uh the air ducts, ducts and t- yeah, yeah. Um, that's the kitty yeah yeah yep yeah, love that I was like, I felt so bad after I was playing an alien game when I was younger and stuff like that. So, you know what? I, I love aliens. So, yeah, I'm gonna, as soon as money allows, I'm going to definitely buy this one. Uh, but yeah, fi- final, final word on aliens for today. 
I have bought for a couple of quid a while ago and I've forgotten until now. Um, so it's good that we talked about it. Um, an Aliens game that was developed for playing on the Specky <laughs> via emulator or on original hardware. Because I was intrigued. It's called, I think it's Alien Neomorph or something. And um, yeah, it's about like 20 kilobytes or something. But it's like a fully modern game developed for the Specky. And I'm really intrigued by it and I want to play that. So I'm going to play that and, and report back on that one as well. Yes, I love... Again, we... we- we love that. When people make new games for extremely old hardware, we're definitely in for that. That's yeah. I can't wait to hear what that one's about. So, um, right, but moving on. Um, sometimes you know when you you know what it's like, Stu. Right, you know when you're being chased by a xenomorph, right, and you you desperately got to get away, and you can't get through the air ducts, right. So sometimes you've got no excuse but to go up. Yeah, and you need to get your practice in for climbing up. So, I've been playing New Heights, Realistic Climbing and Bouldering. Um, nice segue. Yeah. Um, so, New Heights, just for short, is uh, a game that I came across during Steam Next Fest. Saw, the, uh, saw it get a little bit of a... Uh, uh, when I was searching through the list, and I went, oh, climbing games. I like climbing. I, I like, I've always got an idea. I want to see a realistic rock climbing game because I don't like how basic the climbing mechanics are in, like, Uncharted and even Zelda and stuff like that. I want something that goes realistic, in a way. Um, I don't know if anyone could do it. Um, And we talked about that one last week, which I I spoke about, which looked really good. I can't remember what it's called. My bad. But played this one, and I might even mention it briefly last week. But it was... um, It stood out to me. It looked rough, and I thought it was going to be rough. Uh, but I played a demo, liked it, got in touch with the de- developers and got a key for it. So I've got the full game. And, oh my God, I love this game. Uh, it's not actually out until wow. the 6th of July. Um, and basically, it's realistic rock climbing. Um, you start off at like this like rock, like this gym, so to speak, and it teaches you the mechanics on how to use the different like handhold, hand, like the, the hand grips and stuff like that that you'd see at like a... Uh, do you know when they do like indoor rock climbing championships yes. and stuff like that? So you've got all yeah. that where you learn and you have to like place each individual hand and each individual foot and adjust your weight and stuff like that. So like the way you do it is you hold right trigger to say, right, I am now going to move a limb. And then you use um, a stick to move that limb uh, and do it that way. You move each individual limb and, and you sort of like go where you want to go. Um Sorry, use your, trigger, use your triggers to decide the limb, sorry, and use your right stick to move that limb, and then you let go of the trigger to do it. Okay. You can only do one limb at a time. Um, and it's, it works really, really well. So you sort of like, you use like your left hand, and you get a grip, and you've got that grip. Now, if you try then pulling yourself up with the left stick, like try to shift your weight, you're not going to do it because you've only got one hand. So you then put a foot, like your right foot on another bit and your other hand on another grip and then you shift your weight and you'll pull yourself up and then you then have to sort of like put your feet in place where there's a place to put them, get your balance and then you go, right, now I've got to move again and move again. And it's all slow and methodical, but it all feels so, so natural. So how you place your feet also has a bearing. It's not just going, all right, there's a lip there, I can put it. How you put your foot on that lip has an effect because you need to be able to push up with your feet. And so you've got this, like, that explains this mechanic to you. So say you're climbing and the best way to get a good push is to have both your feet placed so that they can push in opposite directions, like inwards to each other to push your body up. Whereas if you've got one foot placed like that, but another foot maybe high up, you can't get that same leverage. And it's accounted for all of that. Um, and it's just so like you've got these like targets. So you're like, I'm one of them at the moment. I'm climbing up the side of a castle. Um, and I think they're all real world locations that they've actually like uh, data scanned and everything. But I'm climbing up the side of this castle. And it took me ages to work it out um, how to actually do it because like you've just got to really get a feel for it. Like I assume proper rock climbers do. Um, but it gives you like suggested paths and stuff like that. And it's like you get tight, like different scores for timing and and um, how many times you fall or, or whatever and things like that 
and you get like start off like with only short little routes, but then you get like these big routes that you've got to do that can take a long, long time, uh, a long, long time. And uh, yeah, I, I've just really fallen for it. Uh, now, what I will say on an accessibility point of view, the writing is tiny, and I will be feeding back to them to go. Look, you need to improve the writing. Oh, no, the, 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 uh, the font size is on this, because on the Steam Deck especially, it's tiny. Uh, but I'm forgiving that at the moment, because I just I can't believe that this rough-looking, what should be just a physics gimmicky, almost goat simulator-esque feeling game, when you first look at it, is my standout of the Steam Next Fest, and it's just something I've just completely fallen for. It's brilliant. Excellent, excellent. That sounds really cool. So, my question would be, right, have you played climbing games in VR? Because there are a lot of them, or there's a lot of games where there's climbing involved, and it really is good, and it's like, what you do is you tend to have, you know, you, you separate your controllers, and you kind of, yeah, you, you use... You use the triggers to engage and then you let go and you, you move your arm physically to, you know, put it in a different place and you climb like that. And it's almost as if you're doing it in real life, but without having to use any of the effort. Um, does it capture that kind of well? Or do you think, oh, if you've played it in VR, you probably shouldn't bother? Um, so I've seen VR climbing, um, never played it. Um, and... VR climbing to me has always looked like, oh, you're just using your hands. Um, and it's never looked like it's proper climbing in that regard because you don't just climb using your hands. But that's how it's always looked to me. I might be wrong because yeah. I've never yeah. played no. it. No, I um, think you're right. Right. This, you feel like the first moment it goes to you, right, this is how you can climb using just your hands. And it feels difficult. Then it takes you to another one where it teaches you about shifting your weight. And then it gets, takes you to another bit, which is about, right, now use your legs. And the second you start using your legs to climb, it clicks. And it feels good. It feels natural. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit quoppy in places where some weird physics with your legs as you kind of wrap them around and they do things they shouldn't do as they're moving. It's early access. It's a small developer. I forgive that kind of thing. But once you've placed your feet, um, it, it's great. And it like you have things like if you you might have a grip that's out of reach and it will say, ah, oh, you're not gonna make this, or it gives you shows you what level of grip you have. So it's up to you. Do you wanna risk that your foot might slip as you're trying to lift because you've only got a slight red bar of grip? Uh, but your hands have got full green grip. So can you rely on just getting that slight push to then use your hands and things like that? So it's got these indicators to it as well, which tell you like how much risk you want to take and, and kind of things. And if you get to a point where, say, for example, you're hanging with just your hands, you then start getting this like countdown meter of like you're getting tired now, your grip's starting to loosen, so you need to get your feet somewhere. And then when you get your feet somewhere, it resets and goes, right, you're fine now. You've got your balance. You've got your grip and everything. So you can start again. So you've got this element of danger to it as well. And I don't think I've ever seen that quite well as well done in VR climbers, which I think give yeah. you the the sense of climbing in terms of the, the visuals of it because it's first person and the VR motion and everything. But I don't think because you're only using your hands in these controllers it gives you that same feel, honestly, as this does by using a controller. Now, what I will caveat that with is I've only played it on the Steam Deck. Brilliant on the Steam Deck, by the way. Um, I've not played it with a haptic-based controller. So I've not played it with like a Series S controller or a DualSense controller. Everything. So I don't know if there's any haptic feedback with with grips or anything like that that might enhance it even further. I probably should have tried that at some point, and I will try that at some point. But even without that haptics, the visual feedback on it is absolutely outstanding. As I said, just a few little accessibility things they need to work on. UI is poor um it, they definitely need a ui designer with them um but it's an is it early access i think it's coming out in early access yeah it's an early access game 6th of july 
Um, it's out, so it's not out as you read it, but stick it on your wish list. Um, and the early sides for me are brilliant. I yeah, I, I, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. Um, if you hated the climbing parts in Uncharted and Tomb Raider and Zelda, then don't let that put you off because this is how they should be done. For real? Yeah, no, that sounds really interesting. Uh, it does. <clears throat> You're right. I mean, I've not, to my shame, I've not played the climb yet on VR, even though I have it. It's just because getting around to it. But um, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think it has that really in-depth sim aspect to it in most VR stuff um, where you're considering all your limbs and your weight balance and stuff. So yeah, no, that sounds really, yeah, pretty intriguing and, and quite novel. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, my first thought when I first saw it was like, this is going to be a, oh, look at the body, look at the body moves. And it was going to be like a joke game kind of thing uh, because there's one that's just come out, I think, called Only Up which is uh, like it's basically a game for streamers essentially where you're just climbing climbing yeah. climbing up these impossible structures basically they're thrown assets at a screen and we climb up them um and so i was like oh this could be it and then i saw it, it was like oh no that's not it at all um it's a glorified minecraft mod <laughs> um right. whereas no this this has gone it looks jokey in like i say some of the physics and like the body movements where it's a bit you know, it doesn't quite... They need to work out how to stop clipping through legs and stuff like that with you as you do things. But it's definitely serious in its nature. And it... Oh, yeah, I just... Give it a look. Everyone just please give it a look because what it's doing, I think, hasn't been done before properly or well. And they they, they found the gap in the market and have gone for it. So good on them. Nice. Yeah. Good on them, yeah. Um, and the guy who said it to me is called Guido. And if you're called Guido, then you deserve all, all, all the uh, wish lists possible because it's a great all name. Money. It is yeah. a superb name. It Love is. it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's it from me. Um, just a really good week of like mixing up the games again, but also a lot of Street Fighter. Awesome. Look, I invented um, a dock for Arcade Sticks and Steam Deck. Um, so if you check out, obviously it's not made by JSOX, but they've they've highlighted, you know, put your hands up if you would buy this. If anyone listening could go to JSOX, find their Twitter and go, yeah, I'd buy that for sure, just so I could get that made. Um, I don't care if they make their money out of it and I don't, I just want the dock. Um, and I've definitely wanted it through myself because I've got ADHD. Um, and they might. So yeah, tell them you nice. want it. I will. I will. I could get use out of that as well. So yeah, yeah I will. Um, and they, they could do the CEO event or a, uh, or a an Evo event where they've got all like people like, oh, we've got the Steam Deck rounds now with their little portable Steam Deck arcade stick combos. There we go. New, new event at Evo. All good. Let's go. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, do you know what? I think I'll shut up now. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yes... Thanks for that, though. That's uh, It's all interesting stuff, and it's been good games this week. Really enjoyed playing them, which is nice. So, yeah, for everybody else, hope you have a good week. Catch us next week, of course, as usual. In the meantime, follow us on all the socials. Check out our content on the internet on all the different places you can imagine. And until next time, stay safe and stay sane.